Taking three. I'm going for the St. Louis now. Oh, no. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> you get your two? <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to the channel everyone, Thoughtgore here of course, and today I have a video that was submitted by Solon once again. Um, thank you again Solon for, me, er, for submitting these replays to me, always appreciated, and I mean this replay that he has submitted is just phenomenal. It is amazing. When I saw this, I, <laughs> I knew right away that I had an episode, because this is, this is just fantastic. Um, so he is in his North Carolina. Now, just while the battle is opening up here, you know, just to throw some other information at you here, um, didn't put a video up yesterday, and uh, reason for it was that I got Fallout 4 yesterday. Yes, Fallout 4. Uh, what a game that is. I am addicted to that game already. I know I am. Uh, I think I ended up playing it till, like, mm, 2 o'clock in the morning last night or something. It was ridiculous, <laughs> but... What an awesome game that is! Uh, if anyone you know knows of the Fallout series um, and you haven't gotten four, you definitely want to get four. Uh, it's quite expensive, however. Um, and anyone who doesn't know what Fallout is, I would definitely suggest taking a look at Fallout Four, or at the very least, um, some of the earlier Fallout games. It's fantastic! They're they're just amazing. Anyway, anyway, getting back to our game today. Uh, so, like I said, Solon's in his North Carolina today. Uh, we are on Two Brothers, and uh, of course this is after the patch, uh, so, you know, islands have changed positions here, and immediately right off the bat, Solon's going to go on the east side. There's a few ships that are going to support him on the east side. You can see we've got this Atlanta over here. There he is there. Uh, and then there is a, I think it's another battleship over there as well that's going to be supporting him. Uh, then we have this destroyer. Now, initially... You'll see it here momentarily. Initially, it looked like the destroyer was AFK. Turns out he's not. Um, however, when he does actually load into the battle, he makes a pretty stupid move and not supporting Solon on this side. Um, yeah, typical, I suppose, but whatever. Solon doesn't need any of that. He is just going to, you know, rock this whole place and just, <laughs> just destroy everything. It is going to be amazing. Uh, I can tell you that. So initially looking at, um, you know, the spread out of the Allies, you can see for the most part, everyone is going to be heading on the west side. There are going to be some more cruisers that are going to come and help over here on the east, uh, but they're further behind. It's going to take them a little, you know, just a few minutes to actually get up to speed and, um, you know, catch up with the, the force that's pushing first. Uh, so you can see here, Solon is, you know, questioning this destroyer. What is the destroyer doing? Is he, in fact, AFK? Um, and, you know, he even asks, are you AFK? Doesn't get a response. <laughs> so, that uh, leads you to believe that, yeah, probably that guy is AFK. But, uh, like I said, like I said, you know, he actually does end up moving. Uh, doesn't move in the right direction, but uh, does end up moving. Um, and you can see as well that Solon is requesting support on this east side because yeah he's right he needs a destroyer or ideally needs a destroyer to be ahead of him ahead of this group of allies here to go into the island and spot ships that may be around Solon's already spotted there's the German tier 7 cruiser York right there there he is and Solon puts some shots out into him immediately so there they go shots are on the way to the York York pops out of view doesn't really matter <laughs> <laughs> He'll get his. He will get his. Don't worry about it. Um, so again, you can see on the east side, like I said, there are only these three ships. But you'll notice that there are some cruisers in the back. They're still kind of in the cap right now. Uh, but there are some cruisers that may be coming over here to help out as well. Uh, there's the York again. There's more shots going out towards the York. Now I gotta say, I mean, I don't have a North Carolina myself, um, I, I don't have any American battleships actually. I made it up to tier 6 in the American battleships during closed beta, and I hated the American battleships with a passion. Uh, it's the only, uh, it's only going to be at tier 8 that I think I'm actually going to start enjoying the American battleships. Um, and the main reason for that is that they actually have some speed. Yes, that's my biggest gripe about the American battleships uh, before you get to the North Carolina, is that they are so painfully slow that I just can't, I just can't deal with it. I'm, I'm so used to my, my Japanese ships, my German ships that go, you know, at least 30 knots that I cannot deal with a ship that's that's going to be going, I don't know, 20 knots? No, I, I won't do it. 
<laughs> so, I, you know, eventually I will free XP my way up to North Carolina, um, but it's way down the road, way down the road. There are so many other ships ahead of the American battleships, for me anyway, um, that I want to get. So, yeah, eventually it'll happen. It's just not going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> you can see Solon is, uh, you know, pinging the map, making sure that everyone is aware of what is going on, where support needs to be. And this is um, really admirable because you don't see it very often um, and you notice that he's not spamming right he's not spamming just the same spot over and over no 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 there are pings going on all around the map to make sure that people are aware of what's going on especially in this situation where the majority of your team has gone one direction you need to make sure that that team that has gone that one direction is all working together um, so that you just don't screw everything up right and and throw away your opportunity for victory at this point in the battle you'll notice as well that a lot of allied ships actually have joined up here on the east side so it's going to be the west side that's going to be the weakest at this point originally it looked like the majority were going to the west but you know people did spread out sort of and it ends up that the majority are now on the east so that's good because you know there is some enemy ships over here on the east that definitely need to be dealt with um, and definitely need to be taken care of. While this is happening though, important to realize, important to note that on the west side, because there's a lack of allied ships over there, the enemy is pushing the west side fairly hardly. Um, or fairly hard, I should say. <laughs> hardly, what the hell? <laughs> it's pushing the west, uh, west side fairly hard. So they're getting close to the base. So we need to keep this in mind. Um, you know, at this point in time, it's probably beneficial not to go too far on the east, right? Set yourself a limit, and when you reach that limit, um, act accordingly. So if you're going to push so far, uh, and then, you know, circle back to your allied base or if your limit is once the enemies reach here I'm circling back to my base you know make sure you set yourself those limits there's the first um, citadel hit the Solon God it was on a Nagato and he did some good damage to this Nagato very very good damage it was really um, I guess surprising it was surprising for me anyway uh, to see uh, that citadel come out of the Nagato not that the Nagato is hard to hard to citadel it just didn't look like the shots going in were actually gonna you know hit that part of the ship so very good shot there um, and good damage done as well speaking of damage this this is the most damage that I've ever seen um, or the most damage that my channel has ever seen in in an episode um, we're gonna get to the damage figure at the end it's pretty damn spectacular <laughs> just just to throw that out there <laughs> So, on the west, the Allies are grouping up and sort of, you know, trying to work together, hold off the enemy as much as possible. And on the east, there are these two Nagatos now that Solon is dealing with. Um, you can see the first Nagato that he got a nice citadel hit on. There is that second Nagato that he also got a nice citadel on. Uh, and that was a good bit of damage that he did to that Nagato as well. So a good little wake-up call for those players right there. Um, you know, maybe, maybe... Um, you know, sailing broadside to North Carolina isn't the best idea in this situation. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Solon's detected now. Um, not a real surprise. I mean, he isn't a battleship. I always assume that in my battleship I'm detected no matter what. And in fact, on my battleships I don't really have my uh, um, that detection ability. Um, maybe it is something I should look into, but yeah, like I say, you know, and like I'm sure you're aware, I don't play battleships um, very well. <laughs> I have them because they're big and awesome looking. <laughs> That's about it. Um, so probably why I don't have it on there. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should put it on there. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, Solon as well. You know, you have the detection ability there on your battleship. How does that work for you? I'd be curious to know. Is it beneficial to have on there? More rounds just went out to that second Nagato and just did a bunch more damage to him. So fantastic. Um, you can see the first Nagato is down to about half health and the uh, second Nagato is missing about a quarter of his health. Here is an enemy Farragut. There he is there. Um, I was concerned when I saw this guy. I figured at the very least there were going to be a few torpedoes that were taken, um, but surprisingly no. I mean keep in mind the Farragut right now with the... Um, just wait for that shot to go in. Oh, those all missed. Well I guess one hit. But anyway, keep in mind with the Farragut the new changes to the patch. 
uh, 6.4 kilometers is now the range of the Farragut's torpedo. So essentially as long as, long as you can stay 6.5 or more kilometers away from the Farragut, you don't have to worry about the torpedoes on that ship. Um, keeping keep that in mind. I mean it used to be 5.5 now it's 6.4 because uh, of course you know they they increased the range on those American torpedoes which was nice it makes it makes my fare get a little more playable for me because I'm, I'm more used to having longer torpedo range you know playing the Japanese destroyers as I do. So there's a Nagato we still are dealing with these Nagatos um, but you know, at this point in time, looking at the east side, you can see that a lot of Allied ships are actually dead now. The Farragut pops up again. We're taking shots from the Negados. No, Solon's turning around, and he's going to go back and defend base. Because you'll also notice that the enemy has the ship advantage at this time as well. And because they have the ship advantage, they have the... Uh, cap point advantage I believe <laughs> yes I do <laughs> so there's the Farragut we're gonna put some shots into the Farragut you know don't be afraid to, to, to get some shots into uh, a destroyer when you're in your battleship you can see that that almost killed the Farragut um, important to keep in mind though you know if if you have your choice between a number of different targets in a battleship don't go for the destroyer uh, in this situation the destroyer was right there guns were already loaded guns were already pointed in that direction and the other allies you know or other enemies are behind you and you'd have to turn your turrets all that crap so yeah it made total sense to take that shot at the uh, destroyer and in fact the Farragut got his he's now dead one of the allies managed to get a shot in there as Solon shots were coming in as well and finish him off Solon did the majority of the damage and then the ally went and finished him off so that's great we don't have to worry about that guy anymore biggest concerns at this point in time is really making sure that we're not out of position sure you're taking fire from these two Nagatos but again you want to make sure that you're going to be in your battleship position is key so you want to make sure that you're going to be in a position not only to uh, help this east side and you know take out the ships on the east side but more importantly to defend the base in case you need to you have to be able to defend your base be in a position where you can effectively defend the base because um, look at this situation the allied ships who are on the west side are all gone what ships are remaining have pushed back to the base they're waiting for the enemy to come around now before they mount their final assault in hopes of protecting the base, right? That's what they're doing. So you want to be in a position to help support those guys um, to make sure that if the enemy comes in, they're going to pay a heavy price for that. Uh, and ideally, you know, not cap the base. While this is taking place, though, and Solon's getting into position, you can see he's not uh, just ignoring the Nagatos that were behind him. Uh, so there's still those two Nagatos, and now there's an Admiral Hipper as well to deal with. Um, I can't wait to get into that Admiral Hipper. I'm only at the Tier 7 York right now, right? And it, it's not fully upgraded, so I still have a, a ways to go in terms of earning experience to get the Admiral Hipper, but it's something that I am really looking forward to. <clears throat> There's the enemy Nagato, once again, more shots in. That was like 20,000 damage, I think. That that was amazing. <laughs> Just amazing. <laughs> so that Nagato is gone. So we're down to one Nagato, one Admiral Hipper. There is still a York around here as well. You haven't forgotten about him. Keep that in mind. Hmm. What I need to work on as well, and I notice Solon doing it here, is my throttle on my ship. Um, I'm always at full throttle. I, I don't... Uh, generally, unless I'm trying to make a tight turn, I don't really slow down too uh, too much. And I think it's something that I should probably start doing. Because, <laughs> I mean, watching Solon here make such effective use of his throttle on the ship, it's really damning evidence as to why you should be doing this. <laughs> Uh, put some shots into the Admiral Hipper. Uh, did a bit of damage there, almost 3,000 damage, but uh, no Citadels or anything like that. So he's still cruising around. There he is there. I'm going to put some more shots into this guy as well. Uh, see what we can't do about getting him gone. The Admiral Hipper does maneuver a little, and as a result, most of the shots um, overshoot him. But still, some land and did a modest amount of damage. So that's good. That's good as well. Now taking a look at the east side, just briefly, you'll notice the enemy ships are starting to pop up and they're starting to push into the uh, allied base. So we need to be aware of this, right? And again, it comes down to position. And you can see this entire time, Solon has been putting shots at these guys behind him, but more importantly, getting himself into position to help defend uh, the allied cap. So important. 
so so important to do so at this point in time we're at one kill there is the second Nagato there he is there we've launched our scout to make sure that we can fire over the mountain some craziness here with the uh, with the, the viewfinder majigger <laughs> and <laughs> shots go into the Nagato only a few hit about 2600 damage I believe on that shot so not too bad not too bad at all enemy Colorado over there so being aware of that guy there he is okay we're gonna focus back on the Nagato you don't want to get into a position where you're being attacked from both sides and taking damage from both sides as well right I mean it sounds really simplistic and idealistic when I when I say it but um, ideally that's what you want to try and do shots on the way out to the Admiral Hipper there they go yeah did a bit of damage uh, Admiral Hipper put in some shots into Solon Solon's on fire but not a big deal at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's going to be easy enough to put the fire out. Uh, Solon's repairing right now, just waiting for you know any more shots that might be coming in. Uh, he doesn't want to waste the, uh, the, the repair, right? You really don't want to do that. So, just waiting for the Admiral Hipper shots to finish coming in, putting more shots into the Admiral Hipper himself. Uh, there's some more good shots into that guy. Fires are now all out, repaired them. Everything is looking fine. Uh, we've got a Colorado and a York. Yes, the York from the beginning spun around and went to the west side and is now in the Allied base capping. Need to get this Admiral Hipper gone though, because he's going to be, you know, a cruiser can do a bit of damage in a very short period of time. So shots coming over the mountain. Let's take a look at those. Blam. Admiral Hipper gone. Fantastic. So it's just the one Nagato. Uh, behind us that we need to be aware of. There are only two allied ships remaining though. Yeah, it's just Solon and it's just this Russian destroyer. I think that's a Russian premium destroyer. Not sure on that one anyway. So just these, you know, just these two friendly ships to take on the remainder of the enemies. There is the York. This is an awesome shot by the way. <laughs> Wait for it. Yeah. Van Fantastic. Got a high caliber in that as well. So no surprise as well. Devastating strike. York is gone. There's an enemy destroyer. So we need to get this guy gone as quick as possible. Solon points it out and the allied destroyer takes him out. Fantastic. So now we have a Nagato and we have a Colorado. So the Nagato is quite a distance away and he's not actually capping the base. So the priority is going to be this Colorado here. Um, no real concern as to whether or not you know you're going to be able to kill the Colorado when you're in uh, North Carolina like this. Um, I mean, I'm not sure if they've made changes to the Colorado, but last time I looked at the Colorado, it was a piece of crap. Um, there is a Confederate, fantastic. Um, so yeah, no worries about getting this Colorado gone, and yeah, it's just not 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 a big deal at all, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> <laughs> so Colorado uh, is about to die. Nagato's putting shots into him as well from behind the mountains over there. But what a game this was, right? Um, you can see they were down quite a few ships. Quite a few ships. Uh, Solon puts a last salvo into the Colorado and the Allied Destroyer finishes the Colorado. Fantastic just amazing. So now there's it's only the Nagato left. You can see how the, the teamwork here the team dynamic here really, really played, and how, um, you know, I'm not going to say that it was only Solon who, who, who brought this victory, um, but he played a big part, a big part, because nine times out of ten, we all know that the battleship pushing down whatever flank he's pushing down is going to continue that push. Very rarely do you see a battleship actually turn around and go deal with things. Nine times out of ten, that captain will say, no, I got to keep pushing so I can start capping their base, completely forgetting about your base and what's going on at your base. So that was really nice to see. And now Solon, you know, just getting in position to take care of the Nagato. Um, it's going to be a group effort here though, obviously. I mean, we've got the Nagato that we have to deal with, but the Nagato also has to deal with uh, Solon and his allied destroyer. So shots are on their way out for the Nagato. There they go. Did a bit of damage. Um, you know, not so much, but we've got this last salvo. Oh, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yep, got the, uh, they got the Citadel, and the Torps came in and finished off Nagato. That's game. 382,000 uh, credits, 10,700 experience, high caliber, Confederate, devastating strike.
fantastic. Uh, so we're going to take a look here at the uh, team scores once we just finish having a moment of glory here at all of this lovely experience. 10,700, so yes, this was during the uh, three times weekend that just took place. In addition to that, Solon had on his Confederate flag, uh, so it's you know 3.5 times. No surprise here, Solon is top of the team with over 2,000 base experience, so fantastic there. Uh, the enemy team did have a showing, you know, there were a number of their ships who were over the 1,000 experience mark, um, but in the end, they just couldn't pull it off. <clears throat> Solon, and uh, to his credit, that destroyer player really played a good game. Look at the damage done. 169,643 damage. Yep, yeah, the most damage that my channel has ever seen anyway. Um, more damage than I've ever managed in any battle before. Like I say, my uh, max damage was 144,000, I believe, in my Minikaze. So fantastic job there. And just the final screen to take a look at here as well, um, in terms of credits you walk away with, well over 200,000. And uh, again, the experience, 10,700. Amazing. Amazing. This was a really good re uh, replay. Thank you again, Solon, for sending it in. Uh, and hopefully all of you watching it enjoyed as well. Uh, so that is today's video. Thank you so much for sticking around, watching it through. Uh, leave any comments you have for me. Send in any replays you have for me. Again, I'm not only looking for epic battles like these. They're awesome. But, you know, dirt moments as well, because I do have... Uh, the Ever Wonder series and always looking for clips uh, to incorporate into that video. So thoughtcore1 at gmail.com. It's also in the uh, comment section below for you. Um, hit the old like button if you liked the video today and uh, if you're not a subscriber be sure to hit the subscribe button as well. As always folks I do hope you enjoy the rest of your day.